I feel like uh, we need to we need to have a conversation <laughs> around what's going on in Canada. Uh, so last week I had a video that went viral, like really viral, like is super viral. <laughs> like not just half a million people saw it, not just you know, 600,000 people saw it. The last time I checked, uh, over 3.9 million people have seen this video. And by and large, uh, many of you related <laughs> to exactly what I was talking about. And uh, so we have to talk about what's going on in Canada uh, because a lot of people have been asking me what's happening in Canada. Uh, so, uh, can in Canada, we have had um, inflation, and our inflation rate has actually been lower than many other countries. Okay, but what's causing the pain, specifically? with people who have a mortgage and specifically with young people like me who don't have a mortgage and who are, you know, renting is that uh, in Canada, we have had historically low interest rates. This has caused the housing prices to steadily go up. And in the last 10 years, that's when prices all across Canada have really started to skyrocket. And but in the last since the pandemic, so in the last three years or so, that's when there's been just this huge shock to the system. Prices have, you know, in like in, in many other countries, prices have uh, skyrocketed in the last three years or so. But really, this situation, and I know in my description, I'm going to call it a crisis, but in actuality, uh, we don't have a crisis because calling calling what we have in Canada a crisis would imply that housing in Canada has worked at some point and the truth is is that housing in Canada has always been designed this way housing in Canada has always been designed to exclude a group of people, generally a group of people that are not able to save up for the down payment and who are not able to qualify for a mortgage. Right now, Canada has the highest housing prices in all G7 countries. And uh, I know that many other countries have experienced this raise in housing prices. Hey, Cassie girl. Hi. Where are your, where are your owners? Are they coming too? There's the Maddie girl. Hi. <laughs> All developed countries have been seeing this spike in the last couple of years, right, of housing. But in Canada, it is the worst. And uh, as you saw from that viral video, <laughs> and if you scroll through the comments, Many people feel exactly the same, not just in Canada, but everywhere in the world. But that still doesn't change the fact that here in Canada, we have the worst housing prices in all of the developed nations. It doesn't look like it's going to slow anytime soon. This isn't a shock to the system, and in a couple of years, it's just going to go back down. I read an article that stated that the prices with everything, housing, energy, but very specifically housing, is going to remain elevated until at least 2060, especially with the way that governments are moving right now. So that means that for my entire working life, we are living with these really unprecedented conditions that has been absolutely decades in the making. I'll maybe do another video about why housing is so unaffordable in Canada because there are many factors but a lot of it comes down to the fact that 
housing in Canada, like many other developed nations, is treated as both a human right and an asset class to build wealth. And that's really where the problem has been. And anyway, so if we are going to be living with these conditions, and I mean, I, I make these videos largely for young people in their 20s and 30s today, because we are navigating times we've never navigated before. <laughs> and so I wanted to make a video about how I can be happy with my life, fully knowing that these are the conditions that we are going to be living with until at least 2060. Wages are going to be stagnant until at least 2060. Housing prices are likely not going to go down. Uh, housing prices will just continue to go up and we already have the worst housing prices in any G7 country. So how can I be happy? I think the first thing is reducing my expectations to literally zero. I always knew that, or I always figured, that I would be able to, you know, live in a house. And entertaining is really, really important for me. It's important for me, you know, not to have parties in this lavish mansion, right? But to have a home that is large enough that I can have a dinner table in the middle of it and have people around it. Uh, my current tiny house is 150 square feet and it just, it doesn't allow for four or five or six people, you know, over. And so, especially in the last year or so, I've worked very, very, very hard to reduce those expectations even more. I have never wanted the McMansion. I knew that, you know, even a 1,000, 2,000 square foot home, I knew that that wasn't for me, right? But I didn't realize that even having 500 square feet was well outside of the realm of possibility. And so I've really come to realize that, oh, I will most likely have to live in 150 square feet for a good chunk of my life at this point. Um, and it's it's been difficult for me to just like accept that and accept those changes in my life. I always knew I wasn't going to have what my mother and grandmother had. I already thought that my expectations were low, but I've really come to realize that, you know, especially if I want a retirement fund, living in 150 square feet for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years is going to be the reality. Another thing that I've realized, you know, brings me happiness in this sort of, this time that we find ourselves in is making my voice heard. Especially since I started creating content and I'm meeting people who are in the exact same positions that I am. And I'm realizing that being vulnerable on the internet, even though that is the scariest thing I have ever done in my entire life, and it's, it's still scary, it is still scary for me to be vulnerable where it's out there on the internet. It is definitely the like epitome of like putting yourself out there. <laughs> but I've also learned that it's a really good thing to be vulnerable because it allows me to connect with people who feel the same. And it's been more and more and more important for me to make my voice heard and to talk to people and to educate people about what young people are, go or what people in general are going through in Canada. But this very specifically affects young people in their 20s and 30s. Young people in their 20s and 30s today, there is this huge sense of hopelessness, right? And that's if your skin is the same color as mine. That's if you're privileged enough to be, right? If you are someone who has less privilege. I started talking about these issues and started making my voice heard through 
social media through YouTube and, you know, I'm, I'm always writing a novel. I'm a writer, so I'm always writing a novel. Uh, but, you know, I'm also channeling this into a novel and so on and so forth. Um, and I've really become really passionate about advocating, you know, not just for people who look like me, but what this situation has really created of me realizing, oh gosh, I actually can't even have anything similar to any life that I had envisioned. And by that, what I mean is that it is extremely difficult for me to even just get shelter over my head. And so if it's so difficult for me, who's skin is the color that it is for me as 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 a white person to have my basic needs met how difficult is it for someone who is indigenous how difficult is it for someone who is living with disabilities how is it difficult for someone else who is also queer or if you you know if you want to go with the acronym the 2s lgbtqia community right so me going through this and me having these thoughts and feelings has really pushed me to educate myself on how these more vulnerable communities live and continue to live. And I have learned and am learning and continue to learn, especially Indigenous folks in Canada. And I've sort of asked myself, if I am having difficulty acquiring affordable, safe housing for myself, what is it like for many Indigenous folks in Canada? And it is bleak. Making my voice heard has been incredibly important to me because I feel that young people, especially young people, have been just gaslit by the media for decades, especially in the last 10, 15 years throughout my whole adult life. You know, we've just been really told by the media, oh, we just need to take more responsibility. Oh, we need to start a side hustle. Oh, we need to, we need to monetize all of our hobbies. Oh, we need to hold down two or three or four or five jobs just to have a roof over our head and eat spaghetti. The other way that I, you know, am sure, I make sure that I am happy and remaining happy, right? Happiness is important to me. It's important that I live a life full of joy and happiness, not only because I feel that choosing a life of happiness in, especially in this day and age where we have climate change, we have political polarizations, we have patriarchy, we have colonialism. It, I think that choosing a life of joy and happiness, while that's something that I've been struggling with, especially in the last five years or so, is almost a radical act. And it's important. And for me, that's been about surrounding myself with people who I care about, which is just really, the, honestly, the formula for anyone who wants to be happy, no matter what time you're living in. <laughs> surrounding yourself with loved ones. But also for me, really working to understand people who maybe don't have as much privilege as myself, especially Indigenous folks in Canada, because it is absolutely just appalling what they have, have had to go through and continue to go through. So if you are someone in your 20s and 30s living in Canada today, how are you making and creating and carving out a joyful life for yourself, you know, despite barely able to keep a roof over your head, you know, despite everything else.